Hi folks, shop update. We've had a lot going on. We've got some new equipment. It's also been three years since we moved into the shop, which is hard to believe. So I wanted to talk about some of the lessons that we've learned in terms of how we built out the shop from the floors up to the ceilings. First things first is yet again, we have rearranged the shop and that's because we've got three new things. We've got a Speroni presetter, we've got a Haas UMC 750 five axis and a Haas TM3. So why the TM3? Well, two reasons. Number one, for our training classes. We've had folks that wanna come and they wanna see either what a Tormach is like or what a Haas is like, and the TMs are a popular machine. So if you come to one of the training classes, you've not got the chance to take your pick of whether you wanna learn how to run Tormach or the VF2 or a TM. I also just wanted to see what they were like, what they were capable of. We've got a new sort of project and company coming around speeds and feeds and tooling, and I wanted to have that sort of spectrum. So we've got everything from a Tormach 440 up to now a UMC 750. If you're interested, shoot us an email, john at saundersmachineworks.com to get on the sort of beta list or news list for that new project that's coming. Pretty excited about it. Speaking of that, we phased out our last, I think it's our last Tormach 1100 Series 3 replacing it with one of the 1100 M's. Just got to get the enclosure. Oh yeah, it's inside of there. Just got to get the enclosure finished up for that. We'll upgrade it to an MX most likely when that happens. While we're over here, Johnny 5 is actually coming along really, really well. You can see the track drives. We've got the motor, the gearbox in there. There's a fair amount of hardware that's hidden at this point that you can't see. And we've been doing some fabricating on the tailstock assembly which I was really happy with how it turned out. I thought Ed did a great job. We are in a fab shop. We don't have a lot of experience with you know bumping parts on a brake like this, but they really turned out quite professional. So don't worry, YouTube videos to come on all these on the, as a specific build, but really, really happy with how this uh, project is coming out and can't wait to get going more on Johnny Phi where you really start to recognize even more of his sort of chassis and torso and so forth. The lights are here because we've also been doing some modifications already to our TM3PO. We threw up some rubber strips on the Z-axis way covers. Haven't figured out a solution yet for the Y-axis, um, but that's kind of the thing with these TM3s is they are stripped down. And so I think they used to actually have a sheet metal accordion style cover, maybe sort of like the ball screw, but it collapsed on itself. I'm not sure why they took those out, but I'd like to protect them long-term. Uh, so we'll figure something out there. We added some lights already to keep this enclosure much brighter. I don't like uh, when it's dark in a machine and it's hard to see. It's not just a TM3, it's gonna be equipped with an HRT 210 fourth axis. So this will be really good for some of the work we wanna do on it, both for Saunders stuff, but then also for uh, YouTube videos. And my thought is um, we need to kind of get, get going with these machines and get them installed and really learn them. But later this year, I wanna think about adding a training class that'll either be like a fourth axis class and a fifth axis class, maybe they'll be separate. Um, but I wanna sort of dive into that stuff within Fusion showing uh, definitely the fourth axis stuff because that's really cool, but five axis, even cooler. On that note, we've had our epoxy floors now for three years, and I just wanted to throw it out. I do not regret them for one second. They have held up uh, incredibly well. It was w well worth it, and the time to do that is when you, uh, before you put all the machines in here, the one spot that's worn is probably right here in front of our VM3, which is where we're standing for multiple hours a day, but it's really just the chip chips that have worn off of it. Um, you're still, you've still got some epoxy over the... Uh, concrete itself. Also still really happy with our lights. In hindsight, they weren't that expensive. Um, they're 5K, 90 CRI, uh, LED lights that offer like, I think it's 50 foot candles. Don't quote me on that. Um, if anybody's really interested, we have our lighting plan for the shop. We can throw it up on the NYC CNC site. But having a bright shop, the lights have been low maintenance. They just, they turn on right away. Only thing that we've had to do is maybe once a year we go around with a scissor lift, we pull the covers off and get the bugs and dirt and debris out of them. Next up is this guy. So we haven't uh, made any parts just yet on it because later today our fifth axis starter kit shows up. We've got a base block that'll hold their rock lock system along with a couple of vices and dovetail things. Uh, I've been working on tool paths and fusion and learning the TruePath software, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's from that folks at Camplete, but what that's gonna let us do is you import your part, your stock, it comes with your tooling, your fixturing, and then it runs full simulation. It will give you the confidence to know you're not gonna crash the machine. And what's funny is one of the first parts I wanna make is a part for Johnny Five, and 
I programmed it with a swarf to do a backside deburring with an end mill, and sure enough, Camplete showed me, it was really cool, that the B axis, which is your platter here as it rotates this way, this sort of part right here would have pivoted up and would have hit the machine housing all the way up here. You just can't tell that unless you have simulation software. So again, what I like about that is I'm actually about to head out for a two week factory tour trip, which I'm really excited for uh, over in Europe. And I want our guys here to be able to run this machine and have the confidence to know it's okay, you're not gonna crash or how close are you gonna get to places. So that's really cool. Last up is the presetter. I've had my eye on one of these for over a year. It's amazing. The classic use of it is you'll take a tool, like an end mill like this guy, and you would put it in here, lock it down, and you can jog this over. You can kind of see in the background that screen. See here, go up. There we go. It's actually a fairly complicated system, or there's a lot of capability to it. But those crosshairs give you very, very accurate gauge length as well as diameter. But there's so much more you can do with it, uh, which is frankly why we got it. Like for instance, you can rotate this little knob here and you can turn the black and white view into a 45X microscope. And in this case, you can literally see the damage to that particular insert and where it's been chipped or, or fractured from um, use. So you can do other things like just clicking this button right here immediately picks up your corner radius of your insert. That's amazing, or for ball or bullnose end mills. If you have a mill drill, one of those 90 degree sort of chamfer tools, and you break the tip off, uh, to date we couldn't use it anymore because when you set the height of that tool, the tip is missing, which means you don't have a way of showing the proper length and thus correctly calculating how to run a chamfer. You could try to hack it, but it'd be very difficult. This lets you put that tool in there use one of the macros and it finds the theoretical center point that doesn't really exist and it gives you that correct length. So I am super excited for that. We're using it for the CAT40 tools, but then we also have a hydraulic holder that's three quarter inch that'll let us drop in Tormach TTS tools. Uh, and the folks that were here when they installed it actually set that up as another adapter. So we can actually even get the correct sort of tool length in the, for the Tormach system as well. So that's what a lot of people use these for, is you can set up a whole bunch of tools offline. You don't need a, a tool setter in your machine. And when you set the tools up, you can save them, create a list, and then you can actually just click post, and it will post a program to your machine. You hit cycle start, and it will update all of the tool values for the tools that you set up. So that's really cool. We might do that, but for me, this is a lot more to do with measuring t total indicated reading on runout. I'm looking at edge wear, tool quality, uh, really getting scientific about that, which ties back to the new company we're starting around tooling and speeds and feeds. So we've been playing with this thing a bunch. The capabilities are just absolutely amazing. Another video we've got planned in the works. Wanted to understand more about vice torque and holding power and clamping pressure. And I'd seen one of these load cells in Orange Vice YouTube videos, which are awesome YouTube videos. So I reached out to uh, Eric at Orange Vice and told him about what we were trying to do. And he was willing to let us borrow his load cell. I'm so sorry, it's a little messy here. But what we've been doing is looking at torque values on the vice screw, clamping pressure, holding values. And then we're gonna start measuring deflection, looking at what sort of work holding looks like with traditional um, six inch machinist vices with different pressures, with different spans and thicknesses of stock, different uh, cutting styles and so forth to try to get break down some of the mystery behind that. And lastly, I'll wrap up with my desk. This has been one of the most awesome improvements that I've made to the shop period. I found this rolling desk on Uline. When the feet aren't locked, I can easily roll it around so I can move my desk wherever I want it. So I stay out here most of the time, but if I need to go into a quiet spot uh, to do video voiceovers, it's easy to do. I wanted to be able to move it without powering my computer down. So I just put on one of the Amazon UPCs or battery backup things. So literally, I just unplug one cable and I can wheel the desk everywhere without losing internet, without my computer having to be shut down. And I intentionally bought a smaller desk because I found that the bigger desk is just a way to accumulate stuff and junk. Uh, I've got all my cables wired up, phone charger, USB, SD cards, all that. So it's really one plug ready to go, the nice arm mount that keeps my monitor up in the air. Uh, it's like a little quality of life thing that really, I absolutely love it. Last little thing is 
We're still figuring out and working on our inventory management, cutting tools, consumables, supplies. I'm continuing to spend time. I really like the potential of this system, sort of the digital smart supply type of thing. So more to come on that. I want to get it integrated. We want to put all of our you know, truly commonly used tools that we care about inventory levels on. We want to keep them in there so it's a smart system that can get tied to jobs, order quantities, automatically send POs, and also just give us an ability to pull up an iPad and say, type in Shearhog or type in Renishaw or Heimer, and it tells you where we keep that product. What's cool is that the software behind this can also be used for dumb toolboxes. So we're gonna take my grandfather's old Kennedy toolbox, put a number or label on here. So we've got the high-tech version, which is really cool, but I also wanna make use of this. So if you t search for, say, quarter-inch bullnose, it may tell you Kennedy drawer three. You open up this and it may tell you bin A. We put a little red you know, shallower bin or something else in there, and now we know where stuff is. So I'm off next week, super excited. I get to tour a company in the, uh, in the Netherlands called 3D Tech Draw with a good friend, Lawrence. Get to go down to see Hermla, get to see Kern, get to see the Deutsches Museum, which is one of the most amazing uh, museums, I think, in the world. They've got an amazing machining and industrial manufacturing section. I'm hoping to film there as well. And then there's a sort of big Kaiser, I think it's NMTA or NTMA trip that I'm joining up with, which is a tour of Grobe, Heidenhain, uh, Big Kaiser, Speroni, and Blazer. So it's going to be a super awesome week. I'm able to film at most of the places I just mentioned, uh, as well as throw stuff up on Instagram throughout the trip. So hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.